When you're wanting to decorate a tapered blank, you can't just take a regular rectangular embellishment and wrap it around. Because it's tapered, you're going to need to alter the image a little bit to make it look right on either a tapered tumbler or glass. So an example of an extremely tapered glass would be a martini glass. So the base of it is extremely small and the top is very large. If you're trying to put text or any kind of embellishment on a martini glass, for instance, you're going to have to take the angle of the taper into account. This is how you can do it in Design Space without using any math whatsoever. To measure my martini glass, I'm going to measure across the top diameter, which is 4.625 inches. And then I'm going to measure from the bottom of the V, so just past the end of the stem, to the top of my glass. I'm using my craft mat for this one, and that's going to be three inches. And then I have to figure out the size just at the top of the stem there, approximately 0 0.5 inches. Now I do have something called calipers. They're showing me 0 0.48. So we're gonna round it to 0 0.5 or half an inch at the bottom. So those are the measurements I'm going to work with when I'm creating my shape. So 4.625 for the top, three for the height, and 0 0.5 for the base. I'm gonna take a square and I'm going to make it the largest width of my martini glass. So 4.625 at the top the height of my martini glass, which is three. So proportions are unlocked, change the width to 4.625 and the height to three. And I'm going to make this a lighter color. And then I'm going to duplicate this shape. I'm gonna reduce its height so that it's a thin line. I'm going to change it to green. And positioning it at the top of my rectangle, I'm selecting both shapes. I'm going to do a line top, a line left, and group. Then I'm going to go into my layers panel and I'm going to select that thin line and I'm going to duplicate it. Then I'm going to put it at the bottom of my rectangle. I'm unlocking the proportions for that rectangle and then I'm changing its width and its width has to be the same as the bottom of my martini glass, 0 0.5, so half an inch. So I'm going to grab that rectangle and my grouped rectangles and I'm going to click on align bottom, align center horizontally, and group. Then I'm going to go into my shapes and I'm going to select a triangle and I'm going to select another square. The square I'm going to position just on the tip of the corner of that triangle. I'm going to select both shapes. I'm going to click slice and then I'm just going to delete those larger shapes. I'm also going to delete that second triangle. So the height of my glass is three inches, so I'm changing the height of my triangle to three inches. And then I'm going to stretch my triangle out so that so the bottom point of that triangle is going to reach just that bottom point of my rectangle, like so. I'm going to select that, duplicate it, and then flip it horizontally. So now I'm going in my layers panel and I'm ungrouping. I'm going to make all of those rectangles and then I'm deleting the green rectangles. I don't need them anymore. Then I'm going to the left of my shape and I'm selecting the left triangle and my yellow rectangle. I'm, I'm clicking on align bottom, align left, and slice. And I'm just going to remove those triangles and then I'm sending my yellow shape to the back. I'm going to do the same for the right hand side, align bottom, align right, and slice. So after deleting my triangles, this leaves me with a two-dimensional shape of my glass. So that's basically what your glass looks like if you look at it straight on. Next I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to change the duplicate to a different color, let's say green. And then I'm going to rotate my shape. I want my green shape to be right along the edge of my yellow shape, like so. I want the top point and the bottom point to match up. And then I'm going to take the green shape and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to flip it horizontally. I'm going to change it color and I'm going to put it on the other side of my yellow shape. I'm trying to position this shape so that it's right on the edge and that the top corners align and the bottom corners align. 
Then I'm going to select all three shapes and click on group. Next, I'm going to grab a circle and I'm going to make it very big. And I'm going to click on it and click on score because I want to be able to see through my circle. I'm trying to size my circles so keeping it a perfect circle, it's going to touch at every corner of those three shapes. So if I zoom in, my circle is right at the point of the blue triangle at the bottom and where the blue and the yellow meet, right at where the yellow and the green meet, and right at the corner of the green one as well. So next I'm going to grab a second circle and again I'm going to make it see-through by making it a score line and then I'm positioning this so that so that it does the same thing. So let's zoom in completely. So my circle has to be on the points of my shapes exactly where they change colors. The dotted line of my circle goes right through this point and right through that point and the dotted line also goes through where the blue and the yellow shapes meet and where the yellow and the green shapes meet. I'm zooming back out again. I'm changing my large circle back to a cut and I'm going to send it to the back. I'm changing my tiny circle back to a cut. That one we can leave gray. I'm going in my layers panel here on the right and I'm clicking on my tiny circle and my large circle and I'm going to click on slice. So now I'm going to remove the tiny circle from the center and I'm sending my larger circle to the back again. And I'm going to go to shapes and I'm grabbing a square and making it thin. I'm rotating it so that it mimics the side of this shape. Here, let's, let's zoom in and I'm rotating it until it's right along the edge of that green shape. And then I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to, I'm going to click on flip horizontal and I'm putting it right against the blue shape. So let's zoom out. So I'm going to hide the three initial shapes. I'm going to grab both of those thin rectangles and click on Combine and Weld. And then I'm selecting both my rectangle and my circle and I'm clicking on Slice. I don't need my rectangles anymore, so I'm going to get rid of them. So then I have my circular shape left. I'm going to go to Contour and I'm getting rid of the bottom part of it. So this is the piece that's going to mimic the shape of my martini glass. Even though this may not be 100% accurate, general shape of it can help you position text on a tapered glass. I'll give you an example. So let's say this is my text and I want to position it on my glass like so. I'll show you the difference between if you cut it out straight like this, for whatever reason my curve tool isn't working right now so I'm going to go with warp instead. So I'm going to warp. I'm shaping my text so that it's mimicking the shape that I have made. Now let's send this to cut. So just to show you the example between the one that takes the shape of the glass into consideration and the one does not, I'm going to apply both of these to my martini glass. I'm going to put my straight text on one side of my glass and my curved text on the other and let's just see how it turns out. I cut the actual shape that I made in Design Space and I'm just going to wrap it around and it's not a perfect fit. We were estimating a couple of things here and eyeballing some of the techniques. Even without using math, you can find a shape that is very close to the martini glass. So this is just straight text, just typing it on Design Space. This is after shaping my text to the taper of my glass. So now that I've done my martini glass, I'm going to embellish this tapered shape. I'm using Cricut's printable waterproof sticker set, and I've already printed my page. I put some extra stickers here too because I didn't want to waste it. This is the laminate sheet that goes over it. On the reverse side, you'll see a QR code. If you scan this QR code, you'll get some pretty clear instructions on how to use this product. You just have to peel off that top strip and then line it up with the top of the page. 
and then just lay it over your printed page. So now I'm just removing the stickers from the mat. Here's my label from my cup. You're not supposed to use transfer paper for this. So I'm using some parchment paper to help me place my cup. And I'm positioning my sticker so that it's even at the top and the bottom. So I'm just gonna stick the edge and then I'm removing my parchment paper. Guiding it so that it's as straight as possible. So if you notice, the label for my top and my bottom is nice and even for my tapered shape. 